you need labor power. So you got to give them, these workers, a value to acquire their capacity to work in the Apple industry. And I'm assuming the cost there is a dollar, okay? Which is worth two hours, remember? That's what a buck is worth. It's worth two hours of labor to produce the, this commodity, uh, uh, money or dollars, okay? So I got now, what do I have here? Look at the, you're looking at it like I'm looking at it. I have here the costs of production, C plus V, is $3 or six hours. So C plus V is the production cost of this particular commodity and all commodities, the C plus V. Okay. But this labor goes to work, and what does the buyer get? The buyer gets not merely two hours, not just the dollar of cost, but the buyer gets more than that. That's what, the, that's what Marx is, is arguing here. The buyer gets a surplus that the worker produces above and beyond his or her cost, another dollar, or the two hours. And the total worth then of an apple, when it's sold on the market by the apple producer, so the total worth, the total value, the translation from the German, the total worth is then two, three, four, two, three, four, four dollars or eight hours. Okay? That's what the apple is worth. That's what the apple producer, the apple capitals, sells it for. So. This then is the value added, let me, I'll write it out, the value added by the worker, the total value added by the worker, okay? This then is the use value of labor power, of labor power, which is the actual labor performed, the four hours, okay? The use value of labor power, the living labor, the four hours. This is what? From before, this is the embodied labor. And if you add the embodied labor plus the living labor, you get four plus four is the eight hours, which is the value of the apple in labor terms. Okay, and this is what, again, this is what the seller alienates. This is what the buyer acquires. Okay, that living labor. Why does Marx call it value? Marx sometimes calls this, you know, as I said to you, not, he, constant capital, he calls this variable capital, variable capital, variable, to be contrasted with constant. Why? Well, because the argument, you know, from the whiteboard here is because this particular input varies in value. It, what does that mean? It produces $2, a dollar more than what it costs. It varies in value. The constant capital merely adds its value, not terribly surprising, to the cost of the apple, okay? But this one adds more than it costs the capitalists in production. So Marx has established here, okay, that the source of new value, this surplus value, arises outside exchange in the, literally, the consumption of this particular commodity labor power by the capitalist, but notice, you know, I mean, it's silly. The capitalist is not a cannibal. The capitalist is not eating the person. What Marx means by the consumption of this particular commodity, what he means is that the use value of this particular commodity is the actual labor performed. So, the con in your reading, the consumption of labor power is when the capitalist puts the laborer to work for those four hours, which is the length of the workday, literally. Okay. Last step on this kind of argument, which again is in volume one in your assigned reading. I'm going to do the, the same thing in yet another way to follow the logic of volume one. This timeline that Marx develops is the length of the workday. Okay? Interesting diagram. So starting with zero. H is the number of hours that the worker works. In this case, four hours of, you know, again, abstract labor. The use value of labor power, what the capitalist acquires. Let's divide this. One, two, three, four hours. So down here I have hours, okay? What does the worker yield in value? So I'll put dollars 
over here. Okay. Well, over the entire workday, the value added by the worker is $2. Let's see if we can do this. Isn't it not complicated? After one hour, we have here a dollar. Another hour, we have a dollar. Third hour, we have a dollar. Fourth hour, we have a dollar. Okay? The worker goes to work. Okay? The worker gets paid $2. So after two hours of labor, the worker has basically covered his or her costs. There's your $2. Uh, did I make a mistake here? Let's see. The worker gets paid, if I remember correctly now, a dollar. So after two hours of work, the worker has covered his or her wages. That is, the worker creates, oh, that's what I made my mistake, sorry. Good mistake. The worker creates 50 cents each hour Not a dollar, okay? Because the total is two bucks. So the worker, every single hour, let me be more careful, I'll write it up here. The worker is adding a value every single hour of two dollars, that's the total value added, the use value of labor power, divided by the number of hours worked. So that's 50 cents, not a dollar, like I said, 50 cents per hour. So after two hours of work, let me go back again, the worker has what? Covered his or her wages, because the value of labor power is a dollar. So after two hours of labor, the worker produces, as it were, a sufficient value of apples, a buck, to cover the wages. But the worker doesn't go home. The worker continues to work two more hours, producing an additional surplus value of 50 plus 50 of a buck, Okay, so this is the dollar to cover the wages. Here's the dollar of surplus value. And that goes to the capitalist as the buyer of labor power. Marx then, you can see, you, you, I think you can see where Marx then uses this, this uh, 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 poetic expression, okay, uh, this provocative poetic expression, that this then becomes unpaid labor. Because the worker is literally working for two more hours for no pay. Let me do the same thing in a per hour, per hour basis. The worker produces 50 cents per hour. That's the yield of the denominator. So the use value of labor power in the denominator yields a numerator, which is a half a buck per hour. What does the worker get paid per hour? Well, you all know when you go to work, you calculate the total wages that you receive by the number of hours you work. So you're getting a dollar divided by the number of hours here, which would be 25 cents per hour. So. The worker produces a half a buck per hour. The worker gets paid 25 cents per hour, you know, times the four, adds up to the four dollars. Marx calls this, or the, you know, in business, this is called the little v, the wage per hour. Marx calls this one the intensity of labor. This is what it yields in the numerator. So we have every single hour, the worker produces 50 gets paid 25 cents. In other words, there's an excess that the worker doesn't get that the buyer of labor power gets, not the seller. The worker produces an excess of 25 cents per hour. That's a surplus value per hour times the four hours. There's your dollar of surplus value. Okay, this 25 cents per hour of surplus times the four hours worked goes to the buyer of labor power. So whether you do it on a, an hourly basis, or as I did it before, <coughs> you do it on the, the total labor hour basis, 
there is a surplus value that the worker has alienated to the buyer, who is the capitalist, and that's the source of this extra value. That's the source of profits in capitalism. So we have, a, in a per labor hour basis, we have the I, the intensity of exploitation, versus the V, little v, for the worker, okay? What the worker is getting paid on, an, let, let me put it in red, make sure that we, I end on this note, the intensity of labor versus the wage per hour. The more the capitalist can increase the intensity and pay the same wage, the more surplus will arise uh, for, for the uh, capitalist in this relationship between buyers and sellers of labor power. So that's the argument that Marx has developed to explain the source of surplus value, and I'm going to build upon that next time.